Hello everybody, this is session 10 of our cancer class. Uh, this class we're going to get some, some technical things. Uh, these are slides that I usually use to teach doctors, so I'm going to try my best to make them really super simple. Now we talked about in some earlier slides that our immune system usually kills the cancer. And when I say usually, I really mean it does usually kill the cancer because we have cells in our body, maybe on a daily basis, that are have blocked apoptotic pathways and then are going through rapid replication and our immune system destroys them and we never get cancer. So I've said before, the saying that everybody has cancer um, is really a truism uh, that because cancer is defined as a cell not going through apoptosis and is stuck in rapid replication. So that's the definition of cancer. Why doesn't everybody get cancer, uh, have an expression of cancer where they have a diagnosis of cancer? Well, that's increasing. But the reason why everybody doesn't get cancer is because you, that person who didn't get cancer has an immune system that's that's able to clean up these cells that are going rogue and it's destroying them. But with somebody with a diagnosis of cancer, then they'll ask the question, and they rightfully should, well, why didn't my immune system kill the cancer cells? So why don't immune, system, immune cells kill cancer cells um, perfectly? Maybe I should change that to perfectly in real life because it doesn't happen per perfectly. Otherwise, one in two people wouldn't be getting cancer. So, but in reality, even though one in two people are getting a diagnosis of cancer, even though that person got, that has cancer, they had cancer maybe hundreds of times in their lifetime, and the immune system killed off those cells. But there are some factors, kind of technical factors, on why um, cancer cells survive an immune attack. So, uh, here are some of those. Some of these are a little technical, so I'm going to fly through some of them. Number one, most solid cancers express small amounts of tumor-associated antigens, which um, they affect the dendritic cells. The dendritic cells are cells in your immune system that are differentiating into either killer cells or other cells. So these tumor-associated antigens affect the, repro the, the um, differentiation of dendritic cells to become uh, uh, cells that are not killer cells, put it that way. So uh, tumors, cancers themselves have the ability to influence immune cell production. That's the key. The cancer itself, as it grows larger and larger, has the ability to influence immune cell production. Number two, tumor cells tend to lack co-stimulatory molecules that normally would drive an expansion and a progression and of your T cells, your killer cells. So they... Uh, even though in real life your immune system should see this growing, uh, this growing cell mass as an enemy, you have to remember that if I have liver cancer, so one liver cell didn't go through apoptosis and now it's in rapid replication, though it's not acting like a normal liver cell within the nucleus of the cell because the nucleus is is affected so it's in rapid replication and it's not doing what a normal liver cell is, it still is a liver cell. It's not an enemy antigen. So your immune system is really trained, and I alluded to this in earlier presentations, your immune system is really trained to go against foreign bodies. So sometimes the growing mass gets to a si has to get to a certain size that the immune system recognizes it as a foreign invader. And, um, and then it may be too large to kill. Um, we're we're going to talk about uh, later, too, that as the cancer just continues to grow, the, the simple act of replication causes cell waste. Well, rapid replication causes a lot of cell waste. When you have replication of a cell and 
mitochondrial function of increasing energy and production of energy and all sorts of cellular functions that go on inside the cell, there's a waste given off. Well, that waste is expelled into the extracellular space. That's the cell between the, that's the space between the cells. When you have a cancer that's rapidly replicating, that waste builds up quite quickly, and that waste ends up becoming like a protective layer of slime around the cancer. So maybe you've heard it said that, well, cancer doesn't grow in an acidic environment, so I need to alkaline my body. Um, so alkalizing your body can be very beneficial, uh, especially if you're going to do it naturally with juices and vegetables and things like that. However, the truth is that cancer itself creates an acidic environment. So did the cancer grow there because it was acidic? Well, I would differ with that. The cancer by its rapid replication that's taking place, is giving off all this waste, which is very acidic and is creating an acidic environment. And that acidic environment acts as a protective layer so the immune system can't penetrate that, especially as it gets larger than you even have this greater waste and this greater slime layer, you could call it. Number three, there's tumor escape mechanisms. So different escape mechanisms get a little bit more technical, but they have, they have to do with galactin-3. We have a big talk about that when I have a presentation on, um, on turmeric, turmeric that you want to watch. So don't miss that. Turmeric is wonderful for breaking galactin-3, which galactin-3 helps, helps the cancer cell block um, an immune uh, action against it. So you want to get rid of galactin-3. It also helps the can galactin-3 also helps the cancer cell bind to other cells, helps the cancer cells bind to one another. So it makes it more difficult for your immune systems to kill this this mass. So the cancer cells aren't just replicating and then that replicated cell is floating by itself. It's replicating and because of, of um, adhesion molecules like galactin-3, then those cancers are like binding together into this into this big glob. So it makes it very difficult for your immune system to try to kill that big glob of cells. Usually a macrophage will literally engulf a cell to devour it. Can't do that when the, the cell mass is 150 times the size of a macrophage. So how are you going to be able to kill that? So there's different escape mechanisms that tumors have. Tumor cells also have shown to be to secrete um, interleukin-10. Now interleukin-10 is a is a um, um, uh, uh, type of uh, cytokine from an immune response. So now interleukin-10 is is um, typically a Th1 cytokine. Now, a cytokine is a type of immune cell that stimulates an immune response. But tumor cells secrete interleukin-10, which inhibits the differentiation of dendritic cells to become killer cells. So dendritic cells, you can think of them as, a, as a, like an immune precursor cell. And in the presence of certain, inter, certain cytokines, then the dendritic cell turns into a Th1 cell or a Th2 cell, if you can think of it that way. A Th1 cell is your is your um, killer cells. They're the cells that are going to, they're the Marine Corps with machine guns. The Th2 cells are the cells that reproduce, that produce antibodies. So think of them as the FBI. Well, you want your dendritic cells producing Th1 cells, uh, killer cells, macrophages, that are going to help kill things because we need this cancer killed. Well, to, cancer has the ability to secrete different chemicals that keep your, your immune precursor cells from becoming killer cells. It's, it's kind of crazy. So that tells you, well, golly, jeepers, uh, the, how are these cancer cells going to be killed if they're so smart that they're, they're getting your immune system to turn off the production of, of killer cells. Um, well, it goes to show that um, kind of what I put in the initial part of my book, is cancer, you have to start after asking the question, is cancer a response of the body 
to stay alive in a very toxic environment. That's another theory that's out there. How, if, if cancer is just this solely this bad guy that's a rogue cell that's gone bad and it's in a reproductive phase and we need to go kill it, um, then why does it have the ability to destroy my own immune system? My own cell that has gone bad is has gone so far bad that it has the ability to fight against my own immune system so that it eventually kills me. And then you have to start thinking about the other theories of cancer that are out there. Well, maybe it's because that's the only way that those cells can stay alive in such a toxic milieu. Uh, meaning that if my liver is toxic, do I have an increased chance of having cancer in my liver? Well, we know that that is true, but then we start asking deeper question is maybe the reason why I have increased chance of having cancer in my liver when it's toxic is because it's only a cancer cell that's living in a hypoxic environment that's reproducing that the way it is that's conglomerating together that can actually ha be a cell structure that can stay alive. Um, so it's a catch-22 because that will eventually kill me but I stayed alive longer than my than my liver cells just simply all dying and me just dying of uh, my, my liver, uh, my liver um, t cells literally imploding and dying because of such a toxic milieu. There's nothing to prove it about that, but it's an interesting concept to consider. These cancers become very um, intelligent to be able to fight against your own immune uh, um, presence. So it seems to me that therapy should be aimed at trying to stimulate the immune response. And this immune response that we want to stimulate is that Th1 response. Because it is the Th1 killer cell response that is really going to be able to kill the tumors. Now I'm not saying that we don't need to think about debulking. And I'm not saying that we don't need to think about using some standard medical oncology, surgery or, or um, chemotherapy or radiation may be in order in your case. But after debulking, then we want to make sure that we stimulate an immune response because that's the only thing that's going to keep it at bay. And that's the only thing that's going to keep circulating tumor cells at bay. Also, there's other ways to debulk other than the medical approach. And that's where the RIFE comes in. And we'll talk a lot about RIFE therapy because that in itself can kill the tumor directly, even all the way through the depth of the tumor. It usually does kill the tumor from the inside out. The problem with chemotherapy is grave. We haven't gotten into that really at all in this lecture yet. We'll be getting into that as we go. But what chemotherapy does to your immune system is really the worst piece. So let's just talk about that real briefly. So we need an immune response in order to fight cancer. So when we give uh, uh, chemotherapy, the way chemotherapy works is it's a very, very strong toxin. And... The reason why it doesn't kill all of us when we take it is that it's a toxin that's attracted to rapid replicating cells. So it's a toxin that's attracted to rapidly replicating cells. Well, that's good because cancer's rapidly replicating cell structure, but so are some other things in our body. Our hair follicles are rapidly replicating cells. So are our immune system. So in a catch-22 with chemotherapy, though it'll be, we hope that we could give this poison, and because it's attracted to rapidly replicating cells, that it will kill those things before we kill the person with it. So uh, if, uh, because if you gave a person without cancer chemotherapy, you'd literally kill them because you would just destroy their immune system, and it wouldn't be attracted to cancer at all because they don't have cancer. And... Uh, but when we give chemotherapy, we were trying to kill the cancer right before we killed the patient. The problem is, is it kills the immune system too. So then we're having to fight to build that back up. And it's the immune system that's keeping the circulating tumor cells at bay. So when a person has been given a diagnosis of cancer, by the time it's large enough to diagnose any way, shape, or form, um, it's already given off 
the hundreds, maybe thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of circulating tumor cells. Now, circulating tumor cells are not yet rapidly replicating. So since they're not that rapidly replicating, they're not going to be touched by chemotherapy. So what's keeping them at bay from becoming a metastatic cancer? Well, it's your immune system. When we give chemotherapy, it's killing the cancer, hopefully, but it's also killing my immune system. So it's also giving a huge opportunity for circulating tumor cells to take off. It's a big, big, big stick in the mud and a really bad catch-22 with chemotherapy. So we need to stimulate a Th1 response. So if you're going to do chemotherapy, we really, really need to stimulate a Th1 response. And that's some of the therapies that we're going to get into in the next few presentations. So anything that's going to aid an immune response, here's echinacea and garlic in these pictures, because we need that Increase in T lymphocytes, increase in natural killer cells, macrophages, and uh, cytotoxic cells in our body. That's all part of the Th1 response. So next week, we're going to go into why I choose specific protocols and what ones I like best. So I'm trying to keep this interesting, even though this is dry stuff, so I apologize. And I'll see you next week. <laughs>